In the establishment of social peace also, the example of the Holy Prophet wasallam stands aloft as a beacon to illuminate the path to lasting harmony. His teachings provide conditions of peace for all those who would heed his admonitions, neighbors and wayfarers, rich and poor, young and old, men and women. Before the advent of the Holy Prophet wasallam, women in Arabia were deprived of their rights and distributed as inheritance. By recognizing the social status of women and their rightful place in society as mothers and wives, and by securing their rights in inheritance, in divorce, in the guardianship of, of children, in the management of the affairs of the family, and in worship, the Holy Prophet wasallam established peace in the family on a firm basis. The momentous address which the Holy Prophet wasallam delivered shortly before his demise, after the performance of what has come to be known as a farewell pilgrimage, is an epitome of the entire spirit and teachings of Islam. In the course of his address, he had this to say, O oh men, what I say to you, you must hear and remember. All Muslims are as brethren to one another. All of you are equal. All men, whatever nation or tribe they may belong to, or whatever station in life they may hold, are equal. Even as the fingers of two hands are equal, you are all human beings equal to each other. No one has any right, any superiority to claim over another. You are as brothers. Nare Takbir! Hazrat Muhammad Mustafa! Hazrat Khatam al Anbiya! Khidmat e Insaniya! Nare Takbir! O men, your God is one and your ancestor is one. An Arab possesses no superiority over a non-Arab, nor does a non-Arab over an Arab. A white man is in no way superior to a black, nor for that matter is a black man better than a white, but only to the extent to which he discharges his duty to God and man. The most honored amongst you in the sight of Allah is the most righteous among you. Even as this land, even as this day, even as this month is sacred, this land inviolate, and this day holy, so as God made the life, property, and honor of every man sacred. To take any man's life or property, or to attack his honor, is as unjust and wrong as to violate the sacredness of this day, this month, and this territory. What I command you today is not only meant for today, it is meant for all times. You are expected to remember it and to act upon it until you leave this world and go to the next to meet your maker. What I have said to you should communicate to the ends of the earth. Perchance, those who have not heard me might benefit by it more than those who have heard. This sermon is an eternal charter of peace for all mankind. It shows how deep was the Holy Prophet's concern for the welfare of man and the peace of the world. Peace depends on justice and economic progress depends on peace. In one of his recent addresses, this was the most pertinent advice offered to the world by Hazrat Amir Mumineen Ayadawlaw Tala bin Asifil Aziz. Economic justice is a beautiful slogan, common to both capitalism and socialism. Unfortunately, however, both have failed to do full justice to this golden principle, as economic exploitation and unfair practices continue to widen the gap between the rich and the poor. In the domain of economic peace also, the teachings of the Holy Prophet wasallam provide an invaluable source of guidance for us. He took steps to remove the vast disparities of wealth and poverty necessary for the establishment of economic peace. He enjoined the distribution of inheritance among all heirs, parents, children, widows, brothers and sisters, so that no one has the power to bequeath the whole of his property to any one person and thereby promote the accumulation of wealth. He also recognized in principle the rights of the poor and the wealth of the rich and through the institution of zakat he provided for the discharge of all those rights which the poor have and the wealth of the rich and thus bring about reconciliation between the haves and the have-nots. The concept of interest has played havoc with the economic peace of many households, institutions and even governments. In his historic address at the United Kingdom Houses of Parliament, Hazrat Amir Mominin made the following comment. A major issue today 
is the economic crisis of what has been termed the credit crunch. Strange as it may sound, the evidence points to one fact. The Holy Quran guided us by saying, avoid interest, because interest is such a curse that it is a danger for domestic, national, and international peace. 22nd of October, 2008. The prohibition of interest is central to the economic philosophy of Islam. Allah loves beneficence towards the poor and the needy, and the equitable distribution of wealth among people. The system of interest strikes at the heart of these blessings. A study conducted by leading scholars in which they sought alternatives to the interest-based global economy concluded that, quote-unquote, by applying the Islamic approach, a lot of human misery could have been avoided. This shows that the Holy Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa had laid the foundations for economic peace. 